hello, I'm I'm Michael from from Mainmeta. I'm I'm joined today by Cleona and Aaron from Intercom, and we wanted to talk a bit uh, about the Embroider Initiative that that Mainmeta and a number of sponsors, including Intercom, uh, are are uh, working on getting getting sponsored and funded right now, and we'll probably begin implementation. Uh, soon. So uh, let me maybe briefly explain what the initiative is, what we're doing, why we're doing that um, to begin with. So um, the situation in sort of the Ember ecosystem is we have this new build system coming up called Embroider. It was started by Ed Faulkner like three, maybe four years ago now. Uh, everyone is excited to get it, but we have all been excited for a pretty long time, and it might be, might be uh, like significantly more time until we get it if nothing changes in the way sort of that it is being developed, right? So that's what uh, sort of motivated us to try and get a bunch of companies that have an interest in this shipping, sort of to 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 sponsor um, essentially us to be able to put a team to work on embroider full time with the goal of shipping it sooner rather than than later right um embroider is very important because it improves build speeds it sort of right now it blocks a number of other things that will be coming in ember but that can only be be coming in ember um after embroider has has shipped and it is uh important because it makes it easier sort of to use like Normal JavaScript packages from npm in 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 Ember applications, right? So it aligns Ember more with the rest of the ecosystem. Uh, so um, Intercom is one of the sponsors of that initiative, and that's why we wanted to talk today um, about the why and the how and sort of the decision making process. Uh, uh, behind that decision. So uh, yeah, thanks for for joining for for this conversation, Aaron and Fiona. Uh, maybe do you want to start by introducing yourself a bit and like talking about um, Ember at Intercom, which I think is interesting because it's huge, right? Um, yeah, I'll introduce myself just so you guys know who I am, and then hand you over to Aaron to tell you a bit about Ember at Intercom. But my name's Kleena, and I, one thing to it's quite interesting, I think, about how myself and Aaron work here is we are part of what we call our uh, front-end tech team or an infrastructure team. Um, I'm the manager and, and Aaron is one of our staff engineers. So we're we're quite focused on how we build front-end applications, uh, how uh, developers work day-to-day -day rather than, say, doing product development ourselves. So we're heavily invested in developer experience and um, ensuring that everyone in our company can build quickly and easily and they can just focus on building product and we'll worry about all the complicated things like what build system to use and things like that. So you might hear us talk a lot about build speeds and why that's important to us, but that kind of give you an idea of it. And as I said, Aaron is one of the staff engineers on my team. Yeah, hi, I'm Aaron. Um, I, I work on the front end tech team with Cleaner. Uh, so I guess, yeah, just to set the context on Ember and and Intercom, Ember's been a core part of our Intercom app for many years. Uh, it started off as a Rails app, um, but about nine or ten years ago, there was a little experiment done to see if Ember could could help, and a very small team spiked it out, and uh, it turned out that it was a, it was a good idea. And and we've we've basically grown the team and the app over the last nine or ten years to to a huge app now with over 150 engineers having contributed to it. So there's roughly about 700,000 lines of code just in our main app. We've got a bunch of little add-ons and extra bits and pieces as well. Um, and so I guess it's it's we love it for, for its ability to, to allow us to move fast. Um, technically, it's been a great tool. We've got loads of engineers shipping constantly um, and it allows us to, to build things fast. Um, I guess as a, a bit of context there, just in the last last week, there was 188 deploys to production uh, from 68 engineers. And I, I saw there that there's 126 engineers have merged commits in the last month or so. So we have a lot of work happening and Ember is kind of at the core of that. Um, yeah, that's a sizable team for sure, yeah. It is, yeah, yeah. And this is where things like the, the things that my team care about, the, the enablement of these engineers, 
things like build speeds really start to matter to us because if an engineer is waiting for 15 seconds for every reload, times that across how many engineers are committing code, um, it, it starts to add up. So um, Embroider is quite quite important to us from that respect, among others. Yeah, you were uh, saying 15 seconds. Is that sort of the average rebuild time or like what numbers are you, are you Yeah. That's sort of that's the the P fifty. So the initial build is about three three and a half minutes, and okay. we, it's about 12, 12 to fifteen seconds for a rebuild at this stage, um, and that's just because like our app is massive now. Like we have so so many parts to it, um, and that's just kind of the evolution of of, a, of an app that has scaled to the size we have over like nine or ten years, over multiple multiple versions of Ember. But uh, yeah, about about twelve to yeah fifteen seconds or so is an average rebuild. And do you have any any sort of estimate sort of for how, like how much time overall you're l losing <laughs> because of of that? I guess there's also sort of the time uh, the additional time of sort of like like uh, losing your train of thought during those fifteen yeah. seconds. Right? Yeah, yeah. I mean, I I didn't do the maths, no. But I guess <laughs> I don't know how many times an engineer would rebuild in a day. But you can imagine that over. What sixty-eight engineers all last week deploying, um, constantly rebuilding. It's it's a lot of time we could save by. It's, I uh, I did do it a few months back. I don't have the numbers to, to hand, but I, I did it and I translated it. We have a, a kind of a dollar amount we put against kind of a, your standard engineering hour, and it was it would if we could get from these fifteen-second rebuilds down to one to two seconds, it would save us north of a hundred thousand dollars a year. I don't remember the exact number anymore, but it was. Mm -hmm enough money <laughs> um, yeah. and that doesn't count that time as well as you say if you're doing that and you get distracted and you're on slack it's not actually 15 seconds you've gone off and done three things and then you're coming back to what you're working on so, yeah right yeah 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 i mean yeah so embroidery should definitely sort of like significantly improve the situation there right and um i mean was that sort of the, 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 like uh, the main driving, driving, driving uh, thought behind uh, behind uh, behind supporting the initiative, or sort of what's your like overall motivation, sort of to get involved with this and 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 help uh, help Shiva and brother. It was one of them, I guess. Like I, I had a look there earlier, and there was an issue created four years ago, almost to the day, just sort of talking about exploring embroider. So that kind of shows you how long. Uh, we've been kind of thinking about it uh, and and experimenting with it and kind of looking towards it but so the build speeds are definitely one factor but the more i've kind of thought about this and the more we've talked about it it's it's more than that i think the build speeds is a really important part but it's embroider to me is critical to like ensuring like the the bright future of ember it making it a, an attractive option to new companies when they go and choose a framework right so like embroider to me is not so much the build to it's, it's the bridge to allow us to start using modern javascript ecosystem tools like vite turbo pack things that are going to give us that real amazing experience that we can't get now and we just simply cannot get it now with an ember app yeah. um so that that to me is kind of the the other side and that's all around the build speeds but to me, I think the greater thing is uh, ensuring that future and making it bright, making it a real attractive option to new companies, so that we can start growing that the the community and and strengthening strengthening things, and it being a viable option against all the other things that are out there. Yeah, I mean that's also sort of what we tell sort of every every company sort of that we're trying to reach out to and 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 sponsor the initiative right like ember has never been sort of the biggest community the the like has never had any sort of full-time people sort of to to work uh, um, uh full-time for like like as their paid job uh, uh sort of on on ember like react angular had and so on right and over the past years it, it, it seemed like things slowed down a bit right and if a broader doesn't ship, then sort of it's a bit of an unsafe future, maybe, right? And and I mean, like for companies like Intercom and also others sort of who have invested significantly in the technology, I think it's in in your all owns owns best 
like business interest really to yeah. ensure the the longevity and sustainability of of sort of the foundation of your your products really right yeah i think you can say that particularly say from the company level right what we're talking about build speeds wanting uh Embroider to be attractive to other people. That that kind of makes sense at the tech level or the engineering level. But for at for Intercom as a company, it's very important to us that Ember is uh, is very uh, vibrant and and is something that we can continue to rely on, rely on for the next nine years. It's a framework that really suits us, right? It it, it has worked very well what well for us for the last nine years. We've been able to build quickly, easily. Our product engineers really like it. They think it's straightforward. Which is great because a lot of our product engineers are not front end folks; they're they're full stack engineers. So it's important to us for, from that perspective, and that's one thing we saw with the initiative that that uh, could really help here is is something that would pick up the momentum of the development of Embroider. And as you say, Ember Ember's not got a big company behind it. There's not people paid to work on Ember every single day. Um, the Embroider team to date has been tiny; it's been one to two people. That's very yeah. difficult to make progress. Um, it's also, and one to two people sort of doing it on the side. On the side, the exactly. One to two people with day jobs. Um, so and that, that speaks to why it's taken a number of years to try and get off, off the ground. Like Everyone's been working very hard on it and doing their very best. But that's not sustainable. You, you know yourself, if you're building a product, you will throw an entire team behind it um, and, and the resources of a company. So we, as I said, we really do want to adopt embroidery and we think it's, it can help us a lot. In very specific ways, but also um, helps revitalize the Ember community. So that's why we feel the Embroider initiative is so useful and so important because you, we can now get a bunch of people working on this as their primary goal for a while and see can we push this forward, get proper momentum going behind it, uh, get some of the major pieces we need delivered, delivered, um, open it up to more people, write up documentation, make it easier for people to contribute. We have Aaron and Peter yep. here are both trying to contribute to it as well. But that requires getting a good understanding of what's going on there, the roadmap, the technical future of it. And we think that the Embroider Initiative can really, really help with that and drive it forward. Yeah, yeah. I mean, what I sometimes hear from from uh, from companies uh, sort of that were trying to get on board, right, and that are I, I, I reluctant is sort of that I think some teams have, have the understanding that sort of by building on like an open source framework, like Ember, Rails, whatever, sort of your sort of ex like externalizing that responsibility of sort of maintaining that and, and keeping improving that to like sort of some sort of unclear but external entity, right? And then sort of they're responsible for that, right? But nobody really knows who that entity is and how they are funded and how they are organized and, and so on. And in the end, the entity is... I, yeah, like you said, one, two people doing this on the side, right? But yeah. you're betting your multi-million uh, uh, company or multi-billion company, I guess, in the case of Intercom, probably, <laughs> uh, mm. on that. And, um, you know, for the rest, I, I think, uh, would you have like, a message for uh, for companies sort of that are maybe thinking like, like that and sort of unsure whether they should get on board? Um, I can kind of speak to what we're doing. We we obviously are uh, have signed up to the Embroider Initiative. We we try and uh, give back to the community through various sponsorship um, opportunities like EmberConf, and we've got people going to EmberConf and people giving talks. You and Aaron yourselves obviously run Ember Europe, which we are one of the we're the one of the organisers and sponsors for. We try and do that that kind of stuff, but we're also trying to lean in even more than we have in the past, right? It, like um, Aaron is now part of the Embroider core team. We're trying to uh, put aside time for everyone on my team so that we can actually give time back to the community and try and see if we can take any of the skills we have and uh, benefit the community in any way, whether that's through bug fixing or or simple things like note taking or, or any project management skills. You don't want me in your code anymore. So <laughs> we're looking for sort of non-technical ways people like myself can help. Um, so I think so. I think I think Ember needs that, right? It's not it's not Angular. It's not React. It doesn't have a giant company behind it. It is a group of passionate people who are trying to keep build a framework. You know, we do our best to help them out. Yeah. Yeah, and I mean, it, like it's uh, it's awesome that that Intercon is on board, and it's 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 much appreciated. I think so, uh, but 
yeah, like we said, sort of you're doing the community a favor and the ecosystem, but also yourselves, right? It's, yeah, it's, it's, it's not really a completely altruistic yeah. uh, yeah. thing anyway, but it, it's also not supposed to be, right? right? Yeah. So, um, yeah, great. And I, I guess sort of you're, you're looking forward to like a bright future with Ember then, uh, building on, building on Embroider eventually. Absolutely. And I guess one, one of the main things there is we, we want to be able to, when, when the powers that be come in and announce this new great big feature, this new product, we want to be able to say to them, yep, we, ne we should be building that in Ember because it's, its future is bright. This is, this is where we are. This is where we're headed and have that confidence in there. And, and that's what I think we should all be kind of aiming for, right? Like it's, in, it's in all of our interests, including the communities. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Um, uh, great. Like anything anyone wants to add? For, or I guess one thing to say is like if, if anyone watching this wants to reach out and have a chat mm -hmm. to clean myself, anyone else at Intercom about this, more than happy to chat to them about it. Um, they can get our details from yourself, Marco. Um, happy to jump on a call and talk through, you know, yeah. where we stand, why, why we think it's important and we can expand on this conversation for sure. 100%. Yeah, yeah, for sure. And and if anyone seeing this sort of wants to get involved with the initiative, like uh, and they have to say like reach out to me, uh, like or uh, via mainmeta.com at, at mainmeta on on Twitter, um, you'll you'll find us. We have set up some plans for the sponsorship, so sort of you can you can invest like sort of different amounts uh, in addition sort of to contributing to Ember's sustainability and longevity. Uh, sort of sponsors also will be. Uh, 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 we'll be given credit on emberjs.com uh, and uh, we we'll, like announce sponsors. We have like a, a a weekly call with all of the sponsors. Uh, so this is also kind of sponsoring a conference, but um, in terms of visibility, but also you contribute to 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 Ember's Ember's sustainability and longevity. So um, it would be great to get more companies on board. Absolutely. Cool. Great us. then. <laughs> uh, uh, thanks a lot. I think this is this is good. And um, talk soon. Thanks, Marco. Cool. Thanks, Marco.